it looks like uh, a war zone here. Hey, Kurt Curtis coming at you from the Full Octane Garage, and today we're going to have adventures with trailers. So let's look around the trailer a little bit and show you what we're doing and to correct that problem. It's not as big of a problem as we thought to repair, but we'll get to it now. So as I mentioned before, what we're going to do first is we're going to take a little bit of 105 epoxy West System resin. I'm going to do two pumps to start with. Actually, I think we're going to go ahead and do the full five. That's two, three, four, five. The beauty of this system is one pump of each is an equal mix. So this is five pumps for this one. And you want to mix this stuff up very good. As you can see, my hardener is a little bit older. As it old as it gets older, it does discolor. So normally the hardener would be a lot lighter. This is a, probably a year and a half too old stuff, but it seems to hold up well, work well. So you want to mix it real good. This is just a liquid mix at this point. We're going to take an old paintbrush and we're going to apply it on the surface, make sure that we have a good bonding agent for it to stick with, and then we'll come back and we'll fill it all in. Don't worry about it getting messy, it will get messy. You want to get it down in that groove real good to have something for the next step to stick real good in. So use plenty of it, don't be afraid. I would say it's cheap, but it's not, but it's better if you use enough. If you get some on the ground, you can clean this stuff up with acetone. Did get a little bit down here, but wipe right up off of this stuff. You can also lay a little paper towel down to pick up any of that stuff that spills over. That looks good. I applied some here last night, but I didn't have enough filler, so I'll reapply this this, this morning. And we'll squeeze some filler in. This epoxy will bond to pretty much uh, anything but plastic. So it will uh, stick to, red, to uh, plywood, uh, it'll stick to metal, uh, it sticks to all kinds of stuff. So plenty of uses with it. Now for good measure, I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more because I probably use some. So I'm going to add one more pump of each. That'll give me enough to work with. Make sure you mix it really, really good. And we're going to take our 404 West system. And uh, this is probably going to take uh, two full scoops of this stuff. We'll put one scoop at a time because it takes a little bit to mix that stuff in. It has to soak up in uh, all of the resin. The more fiberglass you add to this, the longer it takes to mix in, the harder it is to mix to get it all soaked up because there's less liquid. It's getting pretty close now. It still runs a little bit, so we're going to add just a little bit more to this. And 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put pour this out on a board, a small piece of wood or a cardboard or whatever you have floating around. And then we're going to take a flat blade, uh, plastic uh, bondo um, piece of bondo plastic and uh, plastic applicator, and we're going to spread it on and, and push it into the grooves. See now it just hangs there, and that's kind of what you want. You could do a little bit more; it probably wouldn't hurt anything. But the nice thing is it hangs, it doesn't droop, it doesn't drag. If you put it in big blocks at this size, it will, but smaller pieces, it's going to hang just right. You know, just have a little bit like that. Okay, so as you see, we have it on a piece of cardboard. We have our putty knife. We'll just spread it on just like we would uh, a wall putty or a car putty. Very same stuff that we use on our Corvettes to repair this very same product. So you take a little bit on here and work it in. You want it worked in real good. Because you want to get it all the way down to the end, and then you can just skim over it and get it nice and smooth so you don't have a lot of sanding when you're done. Did you see just applying a little bit of pressure in it and skimming it over it? it keep doing it, and you'll keep stuffing more in until it's full. And that's what you want, because you want this wall to totally bond together, these two pieces of plywood, which is exactly what will happen. The other thing is, if you have any rotten pieces of uh, wood that are just a little bit you wanted to chip out and kind of freshen up and put a little extra resin on, you can do that. It'll uh, it'll harden just fine on top of uh, plywood, so you can fill any gaps. You probably get about 20 minutes of working time with this stuff, so you, you don't want to work slow, but you don't want to... <laughs> You want to work fast, but you don't want to work too fast either. So you want to make sure you get it all right. And when I put these, uh, cut the plywood for the doors, I cut it just a little bit big all the way around so that when the outside uh, fiberglass panel goes on, I'll use it as a template. I'll take a 40 grit sanding, floppy sanding disc on a grinding uh, uh, machine and I'll grind the wood down to the, the level of where the front and the back uh, fiberglass panels are so that it's a perfect uh, fit compared to what it was last time. I think I mentioned up here there's uh, signs of some cracks. We're going to grind all of these cracks out. You want to grind past the crack so the crack doesn't continue to spread and then we'll come back and uh, We'll make a decision how much we had to grind away, whether we're going to put any fiberglass mesh on or if we're just going to go directly with some of the filler uh, mixed with resin. We also found another crack down here in the front of the trailer. We're going to grind those out. We take a Dremel cutoff wheel and actually grind the area out, put a, cut a V in it, and then we'll come back with some of that filler and fill it in. Any bigger areas uh, where we got these little notches, we'll grind them out and uh, put a little fillet in that. Uh, clean all this stuff up and then we'll come back and put our nice aluminum door back in place and uh, we'll be ready for prep and paint. We've totally filled in the uh, the area that we wanted to bond. We'll let that dry. I believe the dry time is about four hours on the fiberglass and then we can come back later this afternoon and uh, do a little bit of cleanup on it and then get to the hard work which is actually sanding the inner panels down and applying those to back to the trailer.
Did I mention you're going to need a lot of clamps? I mean a lot of clamps. And some extra pieces of board to go on the uh, both sides for clamping the outside uh, fiberglass lining to the inner panel. Did I mention you're going to need a lot of clamps? Also a drill and some uh, wood drill screws with some washers. I would suggest pre-drilling any of your uh, wood panels that you're going to have to apply to the outside of the trailer because they will try to, they won't pull as tight if you don't pre-drill the, the outer edge. Don't pre-drill the inside. The inside will just catch automatically. Okay, we're back. We've just finished applying the adhesive to the wall portion. And what we, again, what we used was the Loctite Proline 3X Premium. And we uh, used a notch trowel, as you see. It's not a very big notch. It's actually kind of a small notch. You don't use a lot, of, a lot of the material. We spread it all over one side, which was the plywood. And then we made some brackets that we could screw in, made sure the screws were short enough that they didn't go through the other side. Around the door, as you see, we clamped everything up. And we have all the original panels bonded back in where the uh, cutoff wheel cut them off. And they all seem to be lining up very nicely. Once everything's dry, we'll take the uh, wood supports off, do a little grinding, and we're going to repaint the inside of the trailer, so it doesn't matter that things don't line up uh, 100%, but we're going to be really close. And this is what it looks like all clamped up from the outside, all along the top edge. And you'll notice when I cut my boards, I cut things just a little bit long because I'm going to take my 40 grit sander and I'm going to sand these boards off. Actually, you're looking at the support board, uh, but the inner board is actually, uh, actually the inner boards on this side is right on. This side, the inner board is cut, is extended just a little bit. We'll grind that down to match the fiberglass and everything will match up perfectly. This one's definitely longer up on top. That'll have to be trimmed down once the inner support board comes off. Okay, welcome back. It's been about 24 hours since I installed this lower panel. I actually cut a piece of wood, used the original uh, piece of exterior fiberglass, which was cut on both ends. Uh, I cut it to length. I cut a, a V-groove in this area so that we would have some extra bonding material to put in. And then back in the back section, you'll see I, I did a, a couple of spots where I filled it and to level it out. And now what we're going to do is, uh, the other thing, uh, before we remove it, you'll notice that I have plastic around these pieces. So the, the typically fiberglass doesn't uh, adhere to plastic very well. So these were my support brackets, so we're going to take them off. And that came off, and the plastic is coming off enough to where I can hit it with my grinder, but at least my piece of wood did not bond. And now I can take all of my tape supports off. And now all I need to do is uh, clean this up and uh, probably grind it down just a little bit, get the metal to fit flush to it. And then what we've done on the top already is we've already drilled our whole new holes with the uh, FRP bolts and we've put FRP bolts and we ended up having to put larger washers on the inside so that the wood didn't collapse while I pulled the FRP bolts because they have a slight thread. You have a slightly smaller hole you drill, let them come through and they have some bits on them that look like this. So essentially it's a, uh, get in some light, essentially it's a little grooved area and you slide it into the hole and it pulls in on those grooves so that they don't spin. So now we've got a little bit of cleanup work to do and we'll start putting the door back together. Awesome. The other thing is you'll notice it's nice, it's nice and rigid 
um, just like the rest of the sides of the trailer. So it's going to look really, really good. Thanks for joining us today at the Full Octane Garage. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you liked what you saw, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to our channel and like us on Facebook. Also, we'd love to have some feedback on what you like, what you don't like, and things you'd like to see in the future. So leave us some comments.